Hound dogs! Here's one. <laughs> Check out what we got here, guys. This is our new seed tender demo that we will be running this spring from J&M. This is an LC390 seed tender. It's got the automatic telk. It's got the scale on it. Everything is automatic if that's the way I want to run it. 390 cubic feet, so technically it holds about 312 bushels. Our plan, our hope would be to be able to put six mini bulks or six of those black boxes you see in our shed in this at a time. We can drop it in the field. I can load with the planter with nobody else around. That's a beautiful thing. And of course it's in the Patriotic Farmer Edition, just the same as our uh, 1432 grain cart that we ran last fall. Ah, there you are. Good morning, Anna. It's at least halfway sunny out, but boy it got cold again. Last night it was actually in the upper teens, so we're still struggling with some cold nights. Overall, the forecast looks dry, but it's cold. If you watched the last video, you saw that we have an issue with the bearings and the rolling basket in the back of the digger. It has nothing to do with the digger itself or the field cultivator, for those who don't know what I'm talking about. But it has to do with the fact that we got a whole bunch of plastic twine wrapped up in the bearings and took a bunch of them out. It melted directly into the bearings like this one here. We've got several of those to replace. I've got six of them here because that's all we were able to get in stock at the store that we got these from. So we've got more coming tomorrow morning, but today we'll do what we can. Middle of April in Minnesota. This thing is awfully dusty from sitting in that dirt floor shed and the grain cart has a small oil leak on it. So I'm gonna give these things a quick bath before I unhook this and get this thing in the shop. I believe I've mentioned before, but we would love to sell this thing. We would love $42,500 for it. If you're interested in this cart, shoot me an email. You can find that in the, des the description. If you're not actually interested in it, please don't waste my time or yours by sending me goofy questions. All right, we're shiny again. That actually took a lot longer than it looked like on YouTube, and man, are my millennial fingertips frozen. You know, it may be snowing off and on here, but at least it's cold and windy too. Four missed phone calls in like one hour. You guys like that? I, I set the camera up on the hitch just for you. And then I drove away and ran all the way back here. See, it's all about getting the shot. I did that for you. Why do I look so white? What's the deal? Maybe it's just long Minnesota winters. Hey, Jim showed up. You're out of bed early. That's true, <laughs> Out of what? Bed early? Yeah, you're out of bed early. For a day like today. <laughs> That's true. Got to get the melted plastic off the bushings that go inside the bearings. We got one cleaned up. Okay, new bearing is mounted up inside there. Just got to snug that up then. You can't split the housing and put just a bearing inside here. You got to do the whole entire piece. So this machine needs 10 of them. We got six in our possession. We'll have the other four tomorrow morning. <laughs> yeah, take that off every time. <laughs> well, that's okay. It's a lot easier than trying to do it by hand. That's for sure. Is that one done now or are we? No. No, I do the other end. Good bearing, bad bearing. We're gonna fix that, Jim. Yeah. I think now would be a good time for a montage. Are you helping?
was a montage. We got as much done as we can for the time being. Now we just gotta wait for three or four more bearings tomorrow before we can finish this end completely off. Should be in in the morning, hopefully. Time to get the 8260 fired up. So I've got fuel filters and an oil filter here. We're gonna get to work on that. And that thing hasn't seen a lot of field work the last couple of years, mainly just on the roller around the yard. A little bit on the rock picker, but it's way overkill for that. Apparently the 83, 8360 already won't start. Ah, uh, kinda. Well, there's one on wheels around here. Batteries, man, I just don't get it. We That 8360, Jim, that thing sat there all winter and fired right up. Now it sits two days and won't start. We put new batteries in it a year ago. I don't understand, I don't know. Something, it's weird. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Better check the hours on this thing. Been a little, been a little while since it's had an air filter, but it doesn't look that bad. 1940 hours, I think that filter said 18 something. New filter. Do not pre-fill. We want to tighten them on with a good cheater bar too, right? What? Yeah, that, that way we got to pull the engine apart if we need to change the filter. Wow. It makes a better video. It makes a way better video. Yeah, See? Makes... Oil and fuel are done. Check all the other fluids. Hit any grease circs. Check the tires. I know that right front's a little low. That one, that one leaks. It's got a leak down on it. Got to pull the computers and the GPS out of this one and swap them with the 8360 because we're going to want the RTK on this to run the planter because we got a second planter coming the end of this week with a whole separate tractor which also has RTK on it. If you guys watched my live stream the other night, you should have caught that at the end. But anyway, I need the computer and the GPS out of this thing. Did you want in? Yeah. yeah. Welcome back, Isla. Welcome in, Anna. Look at this pigsty. We haven't primed the fuel filters yet, have we? No. Okay, I'll let the key run for a bit. Oh, that's not cool. The electric pumps should have primed the fuel filters and they quit running, which should have meant that the filters were full, but Jim had his doubts because he was down there looking at them. Are they running now? Is it doing anything? He said it's filling up now. She's full? All right. Fuel rail pressure low during starting. I think we knew that. Yeah, it's, but it's, it should prime itself again. Can you hear it running? Onyx won't let us talk to mom. Onyx won't let you talk to mom? Yeah, because he says she's on a phone call and he won't let us. All right, let's see if this time works. Oh, psych. It's not running again? No, you just wait down there. Yes, you wait down there. No stopping you. We're good to go again? Try again. Never doubted it. So 
So the 8260 is pretty well ready other than getting some monitors in it. We're gonna go see if this 8360, it should start up now because it had to come close to starting. So we'll fire that up, maybe drop the ripper on it because I got an idea for tomorrow. Pooling, tractor pooling, there's nothing, there's no pool involved. The hope is that it gets cold enough out tonight that it crusts the ground over just enough so that we can carry really well in some of the fields tomorrow because it is supposed to get down into the high teens again. It's snowing again now, but we've got a few fields that we do want to rip, uh, even though. We've got another plan for a different type of tillage tool to get out here that we'd like to use this spring. Uh, we do have some ground we want to rip because this is going to do a lot better job of closing in the deep ruts and burying the stuff that we need to bury. Um, there's just certain fields that we do want to rip. So my hope is that it gets cold enough tonight. I can take this thing out early tomorrow morning. We can keep it moving all day and cover some ground tomorrow. And this 8360 should pull it just fine. Um, we pulled the ripper with the uh, that 743 Challenger we had, which is really, really close when it comes to the horsepower ratings. Actually, uh, it seems to me like the deer just has a little more tor torque than what that tractor had, so it shouldn't be a problem for it. All right, I'll bring them up. So I've got to move all these monitors and mounts over into the 8260. Rather than doing it the hard way, I think, I hope, I'm going to just take this whole mount, this whole bracket off in one shot and move it over into that other tractor. And then I'll move this monitor down here. This is the main one where most of the stuff is controlled. There we go. Isla got booted in the nose by her sister while climbing up the steps. It was a thing, it happens. Item two. And item three. And voila, we're ready to go here. This quarantine chamber is pretty well ready to rock other than we are waiting for an external cab filter <coughs> and a new air filter. In the meantime, now I'm going to throw this other satellite globe and re receiver monitor sys in the other tractor. FBN Todd, what's up? Yeah? Yeah, I'll take a couple bags of that and then we'll throw them in somewhere. We'll find somewhere to test them and see what they do. Okay. Sounds good. I have got communication from the satellites here. Uh, this is an ITC globe with an SF1 subscription, which means it's not very accurate compared to the RTK that I took out of this tractor. But now I've got to go through, set up the equipment, and let it know what tractor and implement we've got here, which it knows. It knew that. It's genius. It's actually just still programmed from the last time it ran anything, but we'll call it genius. This ripper does have the true set, just like the old one did, where it will control our front discs, our center shanks, the ripper part of it, and the closing, closing blades, the leveling system, individually. So it will maintain its depth, and it is programmed to know that. So now I just gotta make sure it's calibrated. No, no, I'm definitely gonna have to calibrate it. Boy, just barely. Look how wet it is under there though. <coughs> that one's stuck. It's wet inside there. That It's sticky underneath, but it's only froze by about this much on top. It might be worth a try if I can't sit still. I don't know if it'll go or not, but it is gonna be cold tonight. So it should be froze pretty good in the morning. She's all topped off with diesel. And now it's sunny while snowing. Go figure. I have decided that I'm confident enough in this thing the way it is. And it's supposed to get colder tonight. And it's 7 p.m. already. So I'm going to let the ground harden up overnight. We're going to get this thing out tomorrow and do some work with it. But right now I have my doubts that I should really be out there. I got a feeling I'd just be making things muddy and doing a lot more damage than I would be doing good. So I'm gonna pull this thing into the shed, plug it in, and tomorrow we're gonna get some ripping done. We're also gonna finish that digger up. We're gonna hook that 8260 up to the planter, 
And if we get that done, I'll be pretty happy. I've got her plugged in so it'll be nice and warm when I fire it up tomorrow. Everything will be good to go. Sounds like I gotta go in and relieve Mrs. Millennial Farmer of some of the homeschooling responsibilities. Apparently Onyx is not being super cooperative and we're an hour from bedtime, which means somebody's gotta go lay the hammer down. <laughs> You know, I have to assume that for most people, homeschooling's gotta be going really, really well.